I am the Commissar. That's my name. Forged Alliance Forever. That's the game. And who have we got with a claim to fame? Up here at about 1 o'clock we have Team Lunchtime. And down here at about 7 o'clock we have Team Supper Time. Going first for Team Lunchtime in the top left corner. This is Blue Shirt Guy who is... 1200 rated, he's cybrant, and he is indeed in the shirt of Baby Blue. Moving along in the front to the centre, we have Dead Six, who is 1300 rated and cybrant as well, he's in grey. Down here, on the other flank, we have the Egg Roll, who is 1600 rated and UEF in Burgundy. At the back right, this is Chucklebones, 1300 rated and Seraphim in grass green. And last but not least for Team Lunchtime, their air player is Nogitsune, who is 1600 rated and Cybron in purple. So we've got three Cybrons, a UEF and a Seraphim there. Facing off against them for Team Supper Time. In the flank position we have God Osiris, who is a thousand rated, he's Eon, in red. In their central position, here at the front we have Spacechuck, who is 1100 rated and Cybron in white. On their other flank, this is Carlitos PT, who is 1300 rated and Cybron in blue. Oh, that's not the other flank. Actually, on the other flank, even further on the other flank, we have Boom King, who is 1400 rated and Eon in mauve. And last but not least, in the air position at the back, this is Ava X Magi, at 2000 rated, by far the highest rated player in the game. He is UEF and he's in orange. And a quick look at the map. We have naval yards here and here, and Boom King is already reclaiming this one and on the way to reclaim that one. Will he beat Blue Shirt's guy who's going for the same thing but hasn't got the reclaim order killed? So that could be a mistake. And on the other flank, we've got Eggro's Com going for this one. Osiris is going to see if he can try and steal it, but he doesn't know that Eggro's Com is there and he's going to be a bit late till the mark. So that com could just suck up that engineer quite easily. As for the rest of the map, there's a scattering of reclaim, but nothing really big. And there's no mexes in this band across the middle, so we could be looking at quite a bit of turtling today. Let's see how that turns out. Looks like on this flank, Boom King is going to get there first. Is there any early aggression? Well, Chuckle is sending his com quite far forward, only up to here though, and Ava has walked all the way from the back and is coming well to the front. He's coming right up here, whereas his opposite number, Nogatsune, is staying in base. Now, back to this, Boom King has got half that naval yard sucked up already, Blue Shirt, however, is going straight for the Engineer, and the NG War begins as Boom King tries to suck him up in response. Dear me, that doesn't sound like a family-friendly thing to do on this channel, but it's alright because Blue Shirt Guy has 11 hit points remaining and is claiming the rest of that factory. Meanwhile, on this flank, will Osiris get away with his attempt to steal this naval yard? No, he will not. Eggro just sucks up that engineer and will be able to claim that naval yard all to himself if and when he wants. He doesn't want to yet because he's probably got enough mass coming in from elsewhere. However, Osiris has now sent another engineer across here and is sending out auroras to try and deny this naval yard while Eggro is trying to stop Osiris getting into the water using this submarine. 
Meanwhile, just one Aurora out from Boom King, who's come to shut down the engineer, though Blue Shirt did get the wreck. Meanwhile, in comes a little bit of spam from Boom King. However, I think that Dead Six has enough to push this back without a problem, and as if that weren't enough, Blue Shirt's com is heading forward. And Boom King wisely retreats a little bit. Over here, the sub is chasing the engineer, but it's a hover engineer thanks to being Eon. Ooh, but look at this! The sub surfaces and chases after the engineer, shooting it with its paltry little deck gun. And he gets it. Good use of surfacing the sub there by the egg roll to take out a Cyrus engineer. And the frigates will be more than capable of dealing with auroras. Eggwell may be in a position to lock down this pond. I think Carlitos may be having a bit of power trouble as he has to pause his gun upgrade. Boom King could be helping him, but he isn't. Dead Six Mino already has the gun and Blue Shirt is on his way to get the gun so it feels like Team Lunchtime is going to have a bit more of a lead on that flank. Over here however Team Supper Time is pushing in. This force might be able to creep past Chuckle who is locked down on an upgrade while Osiris runs in past Eggwell's wall. And Eggwell's com, of course, is down here in the water and well out of position, so there is some opportunity for damage. However, Eggwell's defending with point defence and Chuckle is bringing in tanks. So I think they're probably going to fight it off, although we do have both of these comms coming in. They're both naked. On this flank, Dead Six is forward with his gun comm, Blue Shirt's finished the gun and is going straight for stealth, assisted by those Mantis. For those of you who are new around here, Mantis, unlike any other T1 tank, are able to assist with an engineering suite. They've only got a fifth of the power to build of an engineer, but every little helps. On this side, we've got the two comms fighting one, but Chuckle has just finished the T2 upgrade. So not only does that give him more survivability, it gives him the ability to put up T2 point defense. However, there's quite a lot of spam swarming in from the service, who's going to try and force him back, but Chucker has these turrets to which he can fall back. And he does. Osiris is taking a lot of damage, he's forced to fall back, and Chucker will use the opportunity to put up a T2 point defense. Dead Six pushing a bit forward. Boom King going for the full gun upgrade plus extra range that the Eon have available to them. And with Carlitos now also having gun, we're going to have a pretty fair fight on this side. However, good run by here from Space Jug, who's managed to claim one mex, and if that artillery survives, may well claim another. Yes, he does. Good kills. He'll leave a bit of reclaim, but he'll force engineers to come out from this team and rebuild those mixes. Dead Six tries to push in here. However, he finds that he's outranged as well as being equally gunned, and there are now two comms in here, so Dead Six is going to have to back away and maybe bring in spam to stop him just taking unanswerable damage from the extra range on Boom King. Spam coming in from Dead Six. And she's also got a bomber helping out, which could be nice, though there's some interceptors arriving to help from Carlitos. Dead Six retreating perhaps a little far. I don't think he needs to retreat that far. Or he, or he could come over here and just help Blue Shirt onto Nano. Sensor upgrade for Osiris, that's quite nice. So I mean he'll be able to see what's going on. And Space Chuck has stealth but no gun. I don't like that. Why go for stealth if you're not planning to go on the front lines with the gun upgrade? 
Meanwhile, Supper Team has got this island and Eggwell from Lunchtime Team has got this island and Eggwell has indeed been able to lock down this pond. Nobody on either team going for this pond yet and that's understandable though since Salem's could do a good job up here, neither team has any missile cruisers though and it might be a bit too much of an investment to go for T3 torrent missile ships from the Eon side here so I can understand that but Egro as the OEF he's already on his way to T2 and that's because he could just park a bunch of missile cruisers here and absolutely ruin Osiris's day however combat is going down here we can see a lot of spam has been taken out we've got a bit of T2 coming in for dead six and there's not much tech if any on the field we're just seeing the first t2 engineers coming out for boom king and boom king is taking fire bombers from blue shirt are raining down on him and he's got no answer to that in there he's got no anti-air at all and where carlitos did have a few interceptors they're not coming in now and of course we've got only the first ASF coming out now from Ava so Boom King taking a lot of hits and meanwhile Carlitos is also on the losing end when it comes to facing off against Blue Shirt because Blue Shirt has that nano repair upgrade and he's also got more spam than Carlitos so quite a major pushback on this side here meanwhile over here Space Chuck has been pushed back by Chucker Buns, who is creeping forward and he's using his spam to hold the forces of Space Chuck back while his com puts up T2 point defense turrets to lock down this position. He's done it here, he's moved forward to do it here. Nice play there. So lots of pressure from Team Lunchtime. And both these comms taking a lot of damage, though there's now a couple of anti-airs and a couple of inties in the area which should see off the bombers. And these NGs from Boom King are building T2PD to hold the forces back. Meanwhile, Osiris is turtling up here with turrets to counter Egro, who is standing here and trying to do the same, but Osiris has hit up first and may force Egro to fall back. Meanwhile, Osiris spam, Chuck's com, and Chuck's spam are all pushing in here, but there's a lot of T2 PD from Chuckle, and I think that that's not going to be enough. I think Space Chuck is going to have to fall back, and he's going to leave a lot of reclaim on Chuckle's doorstep, and Ava here doesn't have any upgrades, he doesn't have gun, he doesn't have stealth or anything. Well, he can't get stuff because he's here yet. But I think that he'll be forced back by that installation. However, good creep here from Osiris, who might be able to take out some of these factories. Blue Shirt again coming forward. Boom King's got more T2 helping out now, but there's still a T2 in here. Dead Six also getting extra upgrades on his com, going for stealth, so full Rambo from Team Lunchtime in this area. However, the face-off continues. I don't think either side has enough to break through here yet. In the meanwhile, Let's have an eco check. So, starting off with Team Supper Time. Good balance for Ava. Ooh, Carlitos is shedding power and he would be shedding even more. He's got a huge reserve, but he's shedding a lot. And he'd be shedding even more if he weren't mass stalling. Boom King already power stored. Oh, look at this. They are having a lot of trouble. Why is that? Oh, well, that's why. Because we have both Carlitos and Spacechuck simultaneously trying to get their T3 power online. 
Other team. Bit of mass overspend from Nugget Sune, but everybody else doing a very good job. So, all in all, I prefer the situation of Team Lunchtime, but Team Suppertime will hopefully get under control when this PGen for Carlitos finishes. Osiris sending a sneaky tactical missile launcher which engages with Eggwell immediately forcing him to fall back. That's here. Good little play from Osiris. He tries to push into follow and he has got T3 on the field but the point defences, the multiple T2 point defences are going to carve up that Harvey before it gets anything done. The rest of this is T1. Eggwell with his gun and T2 can just see it off. Loads of T2 point defense here. Osiris is going to have to do better than that. He's definitely doubling down on this TML. But he could really do with some artillery pieces here. Either T3 mobile RT or static T2 RT to try and break this firebase before Edwell and Chuckles have a chance to fortify it. Meanwhile, we've got Blue Shirt and Dead Six pushing forward. And Boom King's in a bit of trouble. If those bombers had gone for Boom King's com, he, I might have actually been worried for his actual life. However, the bombers are instead taking out the point defence, and there's still more back here. Dead Six and Blue Shirt aren't taking that much damage, and they'll heal pretty quickly thanks to their nano. Carlitos has fallen back, leaving Boom King to build all on his own. He has got whalers though, and those T3 gunships may make all the difference, but there is some flak, so he's going to need them in big numbers, but there's two flaks there, and a couple of other anti-airs. So I think they're not going to be snipable just yet, these boys, not until there's a lot more whalers from Carlitos, or unless he goes for a strat snipe instead, which can just drop it before they're all mashed up by those guys. And now we, those cruisers that we mentioned are messing up Osiris Eco. Two mixes down and he's throwing up these point defences. Point defences? TMDs. You knew what I meant. He's throwing up those TMDs in an effort to stop the bombardment, but he's about to lose another T2 mix to that cruiser fire, and he's trying to respond in kind, but Dead Six has put up TMDs, and so these tactical missiles aren't getting through to the T2 mixes that Dead Six has put up here. Again, Osiris fires, but what's that going for, and is it going to hit? It's not, it's just going to be shot down or run into the wall. I think it was shot down, though. However, I see gunships coming in from Ava, and they're trying to clean up that flak before we can get through too many of them. And Carlitos' gunships come in as well. We could be in for some shenanigans here. And Ava has a good force of ASFs to guard against defence from the air, so we might be able to actually see some damage going down here. Dead Six's com is fleeing. And Carlitos is bringing his gunships up as well, but I see action on the other side. So, as Carlitos hands over the gunships, we have Chucker pushing in with a large force of Ilchis and backed up by Ravagers now from Eggro. On this side, Dead Six's Com is Pung. But I think Osiris is going. Oh, because Eggro is telling him not to kill, and it's understandable. Meanwhile, Dead Six is under fire from those gunships. I don't think he's getting out of there. Boom! Dead Six is our first ejection at just under 20 minutes. And down he goes while Osiris falls back, kept thanking his lucky stars. There's now a decent T3 force coming in from Space Chuck, though. It's not going to break through this, though. Ravagers and lots of Elshies. There's not enough T3 there yet. 
Now, Eglo was obviously saying don't kill Osiris because then Ava would inherit all of this eco and losing a player of a thousand rating to give all the eco to a player of two thousand rating would be not the wisest move at this stage. That's the disadvantage when you're up against a team with one very high ranked player and one player of lower rank. If you kill the lower rank player, high rank player gets it all and knows how to use it much better. So, at the moment, Asaris is having trouble because he's trying to use what eco he has to fend off these cruisers. Speaking of which, look at the damage. He's, he's having to put up an awful lot of TMD and even so, it hasn't saved everything, so... Meanwhile, those gunships are getting work done clearing a path for Space Chuck to push through. They've done a bit of work in what used to be Dead Six Space, now inherited by Eggwell. But they've fallen back because there's a decent amount of... there's actually a SAM back here that would have definitely done work in seeing them off. Airgrid, we've got five air factories for Ava and so far only four for Nogatsune but it seems to me as if Ava definitely has the bigger air force here than Nogatsune has here. Ooh, I see a... Ooh, we actually have the laser on Carlitos, but he's going for cloaking, but then he's had to pause it because he doesn't have a T3 PG. Oh, he does have a T3 PG, in fact, he's got two. But he hasn't got enough to afford cloaking yet. However, that's an awful lot of Cybran... Make that three. Three Cybran lasers I see going down. Could we be about to see the most ridiculous Terry's shenanigan ever? Meanwhile, with Dead Six being dead... Six... We have Boom King pushing in with his forces on what's left of the force here as Blue Shirt Guy is working to defend. But with Gun and Nano and five Vets and T3, and we don't yet have T3 here from Boom King, that may be enough for Blue Shirt to defend, especially as Egg World's beginning to send a few T3 units over from Dead Six Old Base to help out. Meanwhile, look at this. That's where those gunships are going. Now there's a lot of cruisers here doing the tactical missile bombardment, but that's an even bigger lot of T3 gunships for them to eat through. And if Ava can tear apart... Look at that! Look at that! Those cruisers just died in like a second! And down will go the HQ, leaving these blazes from Osiris free to push in, and the gunships move straight on for the eco of Eggroll. And Eggroll's got his huge setup here with a lot of Sams in it, but he hasn't got much back here. We've only got a couple of T1 anti-air. And these gunships could do real damage to Eggroll's eco. And sure, there's an air force here, but Nogatsune knows that he hasn't really got enough to stop it because there's this huge force of ASFs from Ava. Is it not it's only going to move in anyway? No, but Ava's going to go in and take the fight. It's Chuckle who's under fire from these gunships now. He's losing... I feel like they could have done a bit more, you know. This HQ would be a nice catch. This power generator would be a nice catch. At the moment, Team Lunchtime are 100 eco ahead, but that may be about to change. Down goes the HQs, down is going all these T3 mexes, so this is actually really devastating now. Chuckle's losing a lot. They're just coming within range of this spattering of Sam's and may have to pull back. But look at the eco damage. Meanwhile, Nogatsune has put up a vast wall of Sams, and rather than face those, Ava falls back. Carlitos has brought in his ASF to help, but unfortunately for him, they've flown over the Sams belonging to Eggro. However, oh, are we about to see another comms snipe? 
the gunships open fire and boom down goes Chuckle Buns leaving it 5v3 and Eggwell going to inherit what little is left of Chuckle Buns stuff he only had these mixes now look at that damage where once well once where a few seconds ago team lunchtime were 100 mass ahead now they're 100 mass behind that is brutal Meanwhile, Space Chuck is trying to sneak guys past the front line, but I say sneak, he's a sideman, but he hasn't put a deceiver in there, there's not anything to stop. I don't see any Omni for Eggworld, but he doesn't need it, he just needs his radar, he can see these guys coming in and his ravages are in range. He just needs one deceiver in there to stop Eggworld being able to do this, and now Eggworld's been able to move troops in and defend. I think that was a bit of a mistake from Space Chuck, he is going to take out a couple of mexes. That one was T3. And he might take out another, but overall he could have done so much more with that if he just had one stealth unit in there. Okay, he does go to second mechs, but he's lost a lot. Look at that reclaim dump. There's 7,000 reclaim there. I'm not counting this reclaim dump because that used to all belong to Chuckles and it's going to take some time for Eggwell and Nogatsune to come in and reclaim all that and though Nogatsune has already started with this T3 engineer here and he's going straight for a T3 mech. That's what I do in that position. On the left flank, taking advantage of it, in comes Boom King and he's now got a decent wave of Harbies in there. There are bricks trickling in from Eggwell, and there are bricks here from Blue Shirt as well, but that's a lot of Harbies. There are shields to support them. There are also bricks that Boom King's brought up here, and that monkey we saw started earlier. Oh, dearie me. That monkey has finished, but here is Space Chuck going for Telly. We knew it was coming, I guess, but that doesn't make it right. It just makes it what's happening. Over here though, Nogatsune hasn't gone for Telly, he's gone for Cloak, and we do love to see that. In he comes, on a transport, flying in, with his cloaked ACU, with a monkey laser, ready to open fire. Cloak, gun, and monkey laser. 25,000 hit points, backed up by a force of bricks, but that's a lot of harbies, and if he gets close enough to Boom King to do the work, and he's not opening fire. He's on hold fire so that he's not seen until he's actually able to fire on Boom King. On the one hand I like that, on the other hand I think he should be clearing some of these because the moment he opens fire he'll be seen by the Omni on Boom King and all these Harbies will open up on him. But Boom King doesn't know he's there. And now he does. He's got the shield. In fact, he's got the heavy shield. So it's taking a while to work through that. Boom King turns. And these units come swarming down on him. If he can kill Boom King, then... Boom! Down he goes. But it wasn't fast enough. And Nogatsune dies taking out Boom King. Ow! It was so brave, but foolish enough that it didn't quite work. And... Team Lunchtime loses 1600 to pick up only a 1400 from Team Suppertime. And Ava inherits it. And now Eggwell has to worry about getting the whole air grid online and taking that over as well. So, all in all, I approve of the braveness. I approve of going in with the cloak. That's, that's a bold move. It's, it's a cyber and being honourable for a change. But. He did, you know, die. So. Meanwhile, Osiris has not been idle and he has set up a naval yard, which he is getting a... Is that a destroyer? I think it's a destroyer he's getting out. And he just set it up where the naval yard for Eggwell used to be. So we'll see what he's got planned for that. 
Meanwhile, though, bricks come sneaking out of the water for Blue Shirt, but Boom King has seen them. He's got Harvey's on point, and Carlitos does have strats. And with the combined defense of the strats and the Harveys, I think that will be enough in this army coming back. He will probably lose, lose a T3 Met, but I think this will be more than enough of a mass dump to pay for the T3 Mex. This is quite a big army that the Eggwell is bringing in, and with these guys distracted back here, fighting off these, and the strats are taken out by the Eggwell to no loss, because Ava's force is all over here. Okay, this monkey is almost done though. Will the bricks focus it down before it gets up and firing? It's only got like a thousand hit points left, there's an awful lot of PD here. But that monkey is taking damage, and there's not much build power left on it. And that is brutal. The monkey is trained when it only had the tiniest, tiniest bit of health left to complete. And suddenly, Carlitos is looking in trouble. He's got microwave, laser, nano, and T2. And he can probably kill quite a lot of the bricks, but look how quickly that line of point defense has died. He brings in his strats, but he's being focused. However, the bricks are distracted by this invading army, and Carlitos makes it out alive just. Meanwhile, Ava finishes a nuke launcher, and he's got an anti nuke already, and so he should, because speaking of nuke launchers, we've also got one there from the egg roll, so. The monkey from Space Chuck, which was planning to come up here, has instead been repositioned to act defensively and block the attack coming down here. And because we mentioned earlier that there isn't actually much in the way of mexes in the middle to defend, this huge attack hasn't really earned a vast amount of actual useful territory for Team Lunchtime, and it's left 30,000 reclaim give or take in that area. Meanwhile, we've got a couple of cruisers to defend from the air, and Asaris is going for Torrance. Now, Torrance could be beautiful in attacking here. He's got a, a single mobile RT raining fire down on it. I think he should wait with this GC until he's got more mobile RT to break through here. Ah, no, he's got a different plan. The GC is coming round the side, and it's going to come in here and try and, because you can walk up here, he's going to try and hit Eggroll from the back, but Eggroll launches a nuke, where's it go? It's going here. And Space Chuck, he's finished the telemazer. He was going to teleport out, but now he's working to finish this SMD, but that's not going to be finished in time, and all that investment in the telemazer is going to waste because Space Chuck is going to die. He tries to run, but it's too little, too late. Boom! Where it was down to 4v2, it's now 3v2 as Space Chuck is taken out. But he is one of the two lowest rated players on this team, and that means that Ava inherits a lot more. That said, the Egg Roll hasn't got even, even more. And the Ecos are actually reasonably balanced with Team Lunchtime 100 Eco per tick ahead to make that 200 but almost identical total mass collected during the game. How quickly will Ava be able to rebuild this? Let's see. Meanwhile, out comes that GC, and it's going to get some work done. That's particularly going to be a nice kill. That mech, which was most of the way to T3, is just going to be 90% of the way to T3, and if Osiris has any sense, he'll turn around and shoot it. The GC stops, and it's targeting Amex. Has he killed it? No, he just set it to auto-target Mexes. That's a good choice. He will definitely hurt Eggroll's eco with that. Eggroll is sending in an enormous amount of Renegades, which he's able to produce at great speed for, at, from this bank. He's also got a Crab Online, but it's the Renegades which are going to do the damage. And Osiris wisely chooses to flee. He's got anti-air support here from his cruisers and the GC has a couple of vets so it should be able to make it safely to the water and Ava isn't going to bring his air force in because there's so much air force there from Eggroll 
Meanwhile, Ava too has, oh, he's inherited that monkey, but he's also got a GC over here and he's working on another. So we could be about to see a significant experimental push, but the first of egg rolls crabs is already coming forward and that's an awful lot of bricks, like an awful lot of bricks. Look at that. Let's have a quick look at the raw firepower there. That is 33 bricks and a mega. That's something in the region of 14,000 damage per second. Hmm. Apparently this GC has decided to come out again and it's taking fire from ravages, it's taking fire from gunships. That may have been a mistake by Osiris. And Ava is sending his air force to answer it, but the gunships back away and the GC backs away towards the water. Meanwhile we have a torrent almost finished and enough torrents could be doing a lot of damage here. But a fat boy comes out for the egg roll and that will be able to mash this naval yard and torrent without a problem. Two XP versus one, but this is a powerful XP and I think that in combination with those bricks, this is going to be no contest. That GC and monkey are just going down. Carlitos has some bricks he's going to bring in in support, but there's just so much here that Egro will be able to push through and Carlitos needs to fall these bricks back before he loses any more of them. That was brutal. And sure, there are gunships, but that's a lot of bouncers at the back there. And those gunships are going to die before they get any real damage done against the Mega. And we have another nuke out from Egro. Where's it going? It's going for the forward base, which has... That's not an Omni, so there's only three T2 mexes. Let's see how much damage that nuke had on it. 88k killed before, which is pretty impressive. But now it's only up to 95k, so that was 7k mass. Not worth the price of the nuke, which is costs 15k mass. And this Mega is still causing trouble, but it looks like Egro wants to back it up. He doesn't think he's got enough to face whatever's here. Another GC comes up. I think that Mega's got enough in its tank still to take out that GC, especially with the help of those bricks. But Egro is cautious and he falls back. The GC tries popping out again, but the gunship's are still there. There's now a crab here as well, and the crab, of course, has torpedoes and can just walk into the water and mash it and this combination of XP's will more than take out the base. The torrents killed a little bit but nowhere near enough to pay for itself. And I think this base is going to fall, it's a pity. These XP's are going to be what seals the deal because if it were just the gunships then there could have just been a few more cruisers out for Osiris but as things stand that's going to be eaten up, no problems. Meanwhile, do you remember that attack of bricks that came out here? Well, he's trying again with a monkey. And there's that neighbor base eating up this. One of the torrents has actually retreated, but there's a monkey under the water and it's going to torpedo that torrent and pop out here. But monkey popping out here first is what we've got to look at. And this could be a threat. It could take out the HQ, the Eon HQ over here. But the GC that has just been finished for Ava comes across and opens fire on the monkey. Somebody suggesting that the monkey really blue shirt another cyber and Teddy Mazer. I would have targeted the HQ over here. But I don't think it's going to have time to take the HQ out and it doesn't. It just targets the GC. I think that was a sight mistake from blue shirt. But it's the price he pays for starting the telemazer. Has he actually got the laser yet? Yes, he has. So, and so was Carlitos. Okay, so Space Chick built the telemazer, died before we could use it. We've now got two other telemazer builds going down here, which is a little bit silly. Three experimental push coming down on poor old Osiris. 
the monkey for, just came out of the water here and died to a vast bank of PD plus a few bricks. But that's not going to be enough to stop these, all of which outrange T2 PD, but we do have this artillery up from Osiris. That said, we've also got an artillery up from Egro, which he's just finished, and another one next to it. So, the RT war is all well and good, and Osiris looks like it's better shielded and better protected, but that's not going to do anything if two Megas and a Fatty come stomping in and blow it all up. And he's working on a GC, but I don't think that's going to get anything done. Poor old Egro. Egro? Egro, not poor. Egro winning. Poor old God of Cyrus. And we have, a, we have a defensive nuke targeted just in front of the Megas out from Ava. I love to see a defensive nuke. I love it. The, the last act of a desperate man, that sort of thing. This Mega has got in range of the PD, which it doesn't have to. That was a mistake by Egro. And it starts moving, but the nuke comes down and successfully kills one of the Megas and severely damages the other one. Beautiful defensive nuke at, from Ava. This Mega, however, is really laying down the fire and so is the Fat Boy and this emissary is just going to be taken out there's nothing that Osiris can do to stop it Eggwell is looking to take the air fight he's going to take it I think he's going to win it Carlitos isn't paying attention to that and he doesn't bring his dudes in Eggwell is going to win that fight I think and meanwhile the artillery takes out Carlitos airbase. Ouch. And I see a tele signature. Blue shirt is teleporting in in behind Ava's air grid and given that Egro is just one air, this is going to be 100% brutality. This air grid taken out by artillery and now in comes Blue shirt firing his maser into the air grid and look at this damage look at this damage this is horrific from blue shirt but he's standing still he needs to teleport out before anyone notices or he needs to take out the hq or preferably both but there's a ravager here he's taking out the hq i think and there's another ravager going up this is could be a mistake from blue shirt he's done the damage he needs to get out of there But he's not going to, he's trying to come in and get Ava, he, but he's just going to die. However, he does the damage and he takes up the air HQ and suddenly there's no air presence for Team Supper Time and Team Lunchtime are incredibly dominant with a 600 eco lead with two artillery pieces. The nuke was also taken out, so they've got their two artillery pieces, a nuke and 600 well I say that but there's a oh that's reclaim they've got they've got two XP's in here there's three XP's coming in here three colossi and a bunch of harbies and a bit of arty so and that was Carlitos teleporting in but look at that there's SCU's there and they just flung up just banks and banks of autoguns on seeing the telemaser signature and down goes Carlitos. So now it's a f with Osiris just his com in the pond, it's down effectively to one on one, Egro versus Ava. And Egro has two megas in Ava's back end, but there are three GCs from Ava in Egro's front end. But, look at that, that's a big bunch of whalers, and there's nothing that these GCs have to stop it. There's now only two GCs as the whalers continue to rain fire down, and they're just not getting the damage done in time, whereas at this end... That said, one Mega taken out, who is Egro nuking? Well, he's nuking over here, the last bastion for Ava. Ava's comm has been spotted and it could just be sniped by those gunships. He's got nothing he can do to stop it. So, 
These GCs are going to try for a snipe, but it's not going to work. There's enough ravagers there to deal with them, and as if that weren't enough, there's a bunch of whalers on their back as well. Even more ravagers here. All that Eggwell has to deal with is T3 in shield, giving him vast amounts of survivability. He could probably overcharge the GCs. They do do some damage, sure, but down they go. Maybe they didn't know he was there. They could have stepped forward and focused him, actually. There was a chance. And he's been pung by Boom King. And there's another GC coming in with a lot of ground support, but there's only a couple of flats in there and no T3 anti-air. A lot of flats following up, but it's not going to be there in time. And this tricker isn't going to be enough. They can just fly the... Eglo can just fly the gunships in, ignoring this, and take out the comm for Ava. But he's focused on protecting his own comm. However, a monkey walks in, the this rock can defeat that, but they can't defeat the monkey plus all those gunships. The black opens up on the gunships. And the gunships fly away, leaving the monkey lord to clean up the flak. The GC behind it will, will do the rest of the damage to the monkey, but all these gunships have to do is come over here and blow him up. Well, they don't. There's um, Osiris here, but I think a, a changeover would be enough as Os Osiris inherited all of Ava's stuff. And in comes Eggwell, this time with a crab, and he's got another crab backing up. Ava can't break through here with those guys. And Ava has got a T3 air constructor up somewhere, or maybe those are just leftovers. I think they're just leftovers. But look at all the damage he's taking, and these ASFs are going to die to the egg rolls. That's enough to take the comm. Ava's got Raz, but no survivability upgrades at all. And he's going to get mashed. Boom, down goes Ava. GG, says everybody, assuming it's the end of the game. Close game, says the Eggwell, you're not finished yet. God Osiris is still alive, and he inherits everything. Oh, says Eggwell, where is the god at? asks Dead Six. Colour me impressed, says Nogatsune. God Osiris was hiding out or along. Uh, is there a mighty last minute comeback in it for God Osiris? Surely he can't make a comeback from this. How could he possibly kill the egg roll with multiple tech triartes raining down on his base, a nuke launcher, Huge air dominance, vast amounts of gunships, experimentals in number walking in, one soul ripper dies, and the Sam's look set to take out another, but there's still two, two crabs coming up, two megas. Has the egg roll worked out where he is? And the egg roll is just behind so much defense, it's going to be very hard to break through. The gunships are patrolling where they think he must be, and you know, they're right. Down there, pings Nogatsune pointing to the pond. Down there, I would wager. And his wager will pay if Eggwell chooses to take him up on it. Torpedo bombers are being produced. <laughs> Nuke the pawns as dead six. And you know, why wait for the top bombers Strategic when you've got a loaded nuke? And he does nuke the pond. I love that idea, says Eggro, and he does it. I think that's quite a stylish way to end it. Nuking the pond containing where you're sure the enemy com is. And I will tell you. How's he going to deal with this? He isn't. There's no last minute comeback. Boom. The Eggro is taken out by a nuke to the face. 
after 50 minutes of back and forth action. There were some times when it looked like Team Suppertime were going to win, but by the end, Team Lunchtime had such dominance. Where do you think Team Lunchtime, you know, took the lead? There were good play on both sides, but where was the turning point? If you think you know, tell me in the comments below. And while you're down there, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and obey. I'm the Commissar, and I will see you next time.